Hey guys, and welcome back. So today we are going to be watching Interview with the Vampire season two, episode five, and I'm so excited. Daniel started remembering his original interview with Louis and Armand, and I really hope he's going to remember more of it this episode because that is so intriguing, especially because when I was listening to that scene during editing, Daniel said that you don't know the meaning of your own story, and that's when he got attacked. But after he's getting attacked, you can hear Louis's voice saying, hey, stop. Like what? Up until now, we thought it was Louis who attacked Daniel because originally we didn't realize there was another vampire there. But then even after we found out about Armand, I think he told Daniel that it was him who held Louis back from killing Daniel. But with that tape in mind, it kind of sounds like it was actually Armand who attacked Daniel, and then we could hear Louis saying that he lost time, which is crazy. Like, what do you mean you lost time? Of course, you could interpret it as like, oh, he went into this blind rage and he attacked Daniel and that's why he lost time. But I don't know, I think maybe Armand did something to Louis and made Louis think that it was him who attacked Daniel, which I don't think is what happened. So. I really hope we get to learn more about that, especially with the way the previous episode ended. Man, that pissed me off. Like, they just cut the episode in the middle of a sentence. Like, that was so rude. So I really need this episode to pick up right where we left off and learn more about what happened back in the 70s. It's also very interesting that, you know, that guy RJ told Daniel that Armand and Louis have killed all of their previous interviewers and like Daniel is the only one who's still alive, but even he got attacked. So it's just like very interesting to think why they let him live, why they let him go. I really hope we can learn about that as well because it's so intriguing. And just like, why are they doing this interview? <laughs> like, I'm so curious about like, what is the goal of Louis and Armand with doing this interview? Because one of their big rules in the coven was not to write vampire history down. And I don't know if that's like their specific coven's rule or is it like a general vampire rule? I'm not sure, but it's interesting that they're doing this. Like. For what? What purpose? I'm so curious about that. Also, something that was pointed out that I didn't fully realize from the previous episode is the scene between Louis and Armand on the bench, where Armand tells Louis that he loves him more than anything, and then Louis says, Arun, and then Armand replies, yes, master, which is crazy when you actually think about it. Like, Louis used Armand's slavery name, and then he called him master. Like, excuse me? What is going on? Is Louis not as innocent as we think? Is he the master manipulator in the background after all and it's not Armand? I have no idea. Like, that could be so interesting, right? Because we think of Louis as the victim in both Armand and Lestat's relationship because we're listening to the story from Louis' perspective. What if none of that happened the way it happened? Or... I don't, I don't know. That was just such an interesting scene and I think it has a lot of importance. So I'm really excited to learn more about that as well. But yeah, that was enough rambling. So if you guys are interested, you can watch the full unedited reaction to this up on my Patreon. The link is going to be in the description down below. And let's just get into the episode. Oh my God, like I'm genuinely so excited. <gasps> guys, 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 it's San Francisco. That's the Golden Great Bridge, isn't it? Wait, 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 wait. We're not going to Paris this episode. We're getting a different flashback or something. Don't be afraid. Just start the tape. Oh, shit. Wait. We had it figured out, didn't we? Mm. What we needed from the other, our proper roles, a less dictatorial approach to the coven is embraced by my love. We broke into the same library every night that month. Hypnotized security, as one does. Flipped the light, laid our backs on long tables, and stared up at the ceiling. Hot. Iron pillars holding up terracotta domes. A light I trick that made the ceiling. I love Daniel so much. Like, how many times can I say that? But it's true. I'm trying to remember what occupied one's time when one was ignorant of the plotting around him. Grab that. It's a thing with syntax. I see it a lot. The impersonal pronoun, one, one's time, one didn't, becomes the third person, him, stops being I or me. And that indicates what? You're circling something. You're getting close to something you want distance from. 
Language as a chicken exit on a roller coaster. Oh, that's so interesting. Or it's daytime and a vampire of Louis' age is fighting the narcoleptic pull of the sun. Or that. <laughs> um, okay. Hi, who are you? Is this Malik? It is, sir. <sighs> Who's Malik? Armand rarely eats. So when he does, he prefers to hunt for it. Does Malik know he's lunch? Are you recording? No. Malik knows if he makes it on foot to Jumeirah Mosque by evening, he'll be paid enough crypto to, well, most anything he wants. Well, that's stupid. Has anyone ever cashed in? Don't think so. He's ditching us. He'll have Malik begging for it in an hour. His methodology, it's never violent, I assure you. Mm. Oh, oh god, the memories, the memories are coming back. Everything in its right place before the theater burns down. In middle school, when you stole your dad's Playboy magazine, sold them at recess. Oh my god, oh my god. Is that what makes you fascinating? The god. In high school, you told a girl you don't need to do her. Is he reading his mind? Let's change it up. I was going over oh my, my notes god. last night. Something he said on in his initial flight to the bookshelves caught my ear. This time I won't save your life. Armand saved you from me in 1973. Yeah, you bit me, I blacked out, he ripped you off me. Dump me in a drug den. Yes. Um, I don't think so. Hundreds of thousands of kills. How often has Armand spared a life? That's what I'm saying. It was Louis. Louis saved Daniel from Armand. Armand could see I was partial to you. Is Louis lying or does he really not remember it properly? Armand preserves my happiness. Even when I don't or can't. He had a hunch you might prove fruitful in later times. I don't buy that. Okay, sure. Let's go with that. Um, <laughs> yes, Daniel, yes. We had drinks you paid. Did we? Oh my God, did they? Did they? Holy shit, no way they did. Get it, Daniel. I'm in a countercultures. So am I the first guy that you... Right back here. No, but probably the first one who gets to leave alive. Backgammon. Oh. Cheeseburgers or chicken chow mein. Take your pick. Oh, well. Oh, no, Daniel. I prefer you like this. All dark and real. Maybe I could uh, cheer you up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Fulfilling my side of the social contract. Do you normally interview your subjects with your shirt off? So, we didn't. No. <laughs> oh, come on. That would have been iconic. I really thought we did. Do you want to now? He sometimes lingers when boats come into harbor. <laughs> San Francisco. Psychedelics, disco biscuits. I'm a vampire. I mean, I'm really interested to know why you uh, believe that. Because it's true. <laughs> Oh my god. Are those fangs? <laughs> He's very astute. Are you the Zodiac killer? <laughs> maybe. You know what? Maybe. Oh, this must be so terrifying to him. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take the edge off. Don't be afraid. Just start the tape. He said the line. Holy shit. Also, there's a lot to be afraid of. I was a 33-year-old man when I became a vampire. And how did it come about? Well, it started with a guy called Lestat. You smoked shaky cigarette after shaky cigarette. You shook more then than you do now. What I remember most, other than that you were an alien five feet from me, was how eager you were to spill. No coaxing on my part. No journalism, per se. You were terrified of me, Daniel. You were lonely, Louis. It was gratifying to tell you what I was after mingling with humans for so long. You weren't thrill-seeking. You were floundering, tape after tape of emotional upchuck. Where's this leading, Daniel? I have some outstanding questions about 1973. Why you talked to me in the first place? Yeah, curiosity, swagger. Nah. I would chat for a few hours, and then who would come looking if another drug-addled homophile disappeared? The Berkeley Barb? Malik will be dead in two hours. You've made me an accessory to murder, and you've had 13 sessions. I want 20 minutes. For me. I want to know, for me, what happened between us. Oh my 
my god, yes, please, please, please. I want to know so badly. The start was trivial, vapid, mm. vulgar. Vulgar. Maniacal, blind, and sterile, and contemptible. Big time asshole. And he appeared frail and stupid to me. A man made of dry twigs with a thin, carping voice. He lured you in. He's a faker. But you figured that out. Just by then, you paid a biblical price for your first love. Oh, no, no, don't piss him off. That was a stupid boy. You see? You were nimble-minded even back then. I was a moron. Will you, uh, do the <laughs> bank thing again? <laughs> oh my god, he's so fucking high. If I had been an actual journalist and, you know, not fried on coke and lewds, I would have realized what a dangerously unstable psyche I was with. Because the next thing that happened was... You detonated. Oh my god, what set him off? Watch Claudia disappear into the night. I'm kind of with her. Get off that bench, brother. I pictured her on the platform, boarding the train. All I had to do was watch the sun come up, let it bleach my bones, purify the putrid soul. Are you kidding me? What, you were just gonna end it? <laughs> I mean, what about life? Like, joy rides and night swimming, and marriage, and cancer, and all of that till the death rattle. I mean, we gotta carry all this shit, and you had to take it out, and you were just gonna throw it away? You've overstepped now, boy. Listen, no, obviously you didn't do it, but you were given the gift, and I've been hearing you bitch the night away about it, and since you used the past tense about her, I figured she... She what? Well, I could see where this is going, and... And what? Is she actually dead? I think you could use me. I think we have an energy, you and me. I could be your Lestat, your Claudia, but better. I mean, I got a little bit of both of them in me, plus a few things they don't. <laughs> This. Oh my goodness. After all I've told you is what you asked for, boy! Yeah, well, you don't know what human life is like. I mean, you've forgotten, man. I mean, you don't understand the meaning of your own story. Oh. Okay, stop! I don't understand. But you can still hear Louis say, hey, stop. While he was biting Daniel, something doesn't matter. up. I took a scoop out of your throat. I deserve to have my ass kicked. For the sheer number of times I said, and then what? All the drugs in your blood, it all went back into me. <laughs> Poor Stone, I prize winning journalism. And then what? I, 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 don't, I don't know. Is that why he can't remember? I have a surprise for you. Kind of a curveball, which will seem like less of a surprise and more like a ambush. Oh God, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Turns out I had a copy saved in the cloud. You're a liar, Dad. So are you, Louie. Whether you know it or not. I don't think he does. Oh my god, he's turning white. That wet thud, that's Armand saving me. Okay. So I was wrong. So what's the ambush here? We already knew this, right? So the room got dirty, so what? I'll clean it up. No, I clean it up. You make the mess and I clean it up. Louise, try and you'll fuck off and find me with apologies to follow. I'm sorry. The seek comfort in the arms of low lives and unfortunates and broken children, oh, fine. Fine, fine, that doesn't sound like fine. But revealing our nature to a reporter. You're boring. You are so boring. Oh my God. Duh. Into the heart and off Duh. the fingers, feet Duh. and Duh. wallowing brain. The weeks. Why did they stay together for another 50 years? The 10 hours. I spent with that boy were more exciting, more fascinating than decades with you. Oh my God, Louis. How did Daniel survive any of this? Does he want to lick my boots or chop my ears off? Is it the gremlin or the good nurse tonight? Huh? Okay. Huh. Everyone I know wrongs me. Okay, okay. Let's wake the boy up and let's try you. I'm the vampire Armand and my daddy vampire grew me into a little bitch. My brother, the he tossed himself off the my roof. Daddy. My sister, Maybe pretend I didn't she have buried me alive. for 240 years. My daughter was my sister, was my throw pillow when he wouldn't look at me kindly. Lestat, 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 Lestat. My bestie. Lestat, I talked shit about him the whole time. The name, the name. 
unuttered in our home for 23 years, said over and over again until it was pounding in my brain like a hammer. Our problems aren't about him. And you threw her name around just for cover, but it always circled back to him. Claudia's name? I loved her. But she didn't love you. Not like he did. Not like I have. I know. Where is she? What happened to her? Do you hear her? She's calling me. Like right now? Wait, is that real? I know they can do that, but where is she then? Second door slams. Metal door. Armand calls your name. He runs after you. Oh. Metal. Oh, he's remembering. The screams. A few more seconds. Tape runs out. Who's screaming? Is that the dead body Daniel saw? <laughs> He tried to end it all. <gasps> oh my god, Louis. I walked into the sun. Oh my god, that's so sad. Wait, Claudia was calling him, like from the other side. Is Claudia fucking dead? I'm remembering it now. Let me ask you a really loaded question, Louie. And then what? And then what? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Daniel. My skin burnt to the color of pitch. Oh, my Char God. coming off me like a siren. What the fuck? I walked out into the sun. I think so. Pieces of my life. Gone. So what else has he forgotten? We should fix that before we self. How long has Daniel been here? The fascinating boy. He's five. <laughs> oh my god! Put him down! He's just fine. Don't! Take it back. Fine. Stop putting fine. him down! Stop putting him down! Fine! Oh my Did god, the eyes! Did you see the eyes? That was terrifying. I can remember a few things. Like... He's just fine. There's someone else there. He's fine. God, yeah, a dead body. Who is it? Oh, maybe just a rando. A neighbor saw you while he was taking out the trash. I had to chase him down. <gasps> oh. There's a TV in the corner near the corpse. Some <gasps> kind of sock or shoe commercial. There's sheets of plastic tarps, some duct tape bleach. <laughs> Surely I'm next. Oh god, this must have been fucking terrifying for him. I can hear you, but I can't see you. The door frame is blocking you. This okay. is so cool, like them remembering together. Rest. Right. Of course, Lestat didn't understand this himself. Lestat understood. Oh my god, that's so fucking creepy that he can just do that. Rise. <laughs> Armand. Nice to meet you. I don't want to die. On that item. I think I know something you don't. Which is what? I wanted drugs. We didn't even have sex. 128 boys he's brought here. He's at five. And you're the first he didn't consummate and drain. So bad. That makes you special. Look, I'm just a shit little kid from a desk. That warrants investigation. I could be on my knees in a second. <laughs> Bartering with desire, is that what makes you fascinating? You even want me in the end. I mean, look at my neck. I'm fucking bleeding down to my ankles. God, the music is stressing me out. I can't feel my body. It's freaking me out. No, 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 no. <laughs> They're going to teach me how to be fascinating. Leave him be, Armand! <laughs> In middle school, you stole your dad's Playboy magazine, sold them at recess. In high school, you told a girl you'd only do her if she had a paper bag over her head. She agreed and you did it even as she cried. A splinter of coldness in you. Is that what makes you fascinating? My legs are starting to cramp. Even his transgressions are ordinary, Louis. The pinhole's closing back up. Okay, it's you who's fascinating. Louis thinks I'm boring. I have Charlie Horst's life left. Do you find me boring? He finds it terrifying. My first memory. I'm being run down by slavers in Delhi. That's your first memory? But I'm not. 
Not hopeful there's much more to you, Daniel, other than a hole. Oh, okay. oh, my. oh, this is so fucking terrifying. I was in Zelaznagorsk to interview an operative for the KGB. Halfway through, I tried to go to the bathroom. He'd locked me in. I was the one being interviewed. Your point? I don't know. No point. Other than fuck your boyfriend. Rage is an imprecise emotion. I'd hurt him, but I was fragile. What? An invalid. Something else. He's remembering something else. Saturday. It huh? was Saturday, but we met on Tuesday. So I was the house pet for what? One, two, three, four days. Your boyfriend. I'm with him now. Was in a trance of some sort. I won't tell you why. I don't know. I can't. Who is he talking to? Lunch is almost over. Try. I won't say why. You fucking try. You were there. <laughs> Go back to the chair. Hero T. Agnew. This, this, this feet in the box shit is bullshit. You're in the chair. <laughs> The TV is on. I can't get off. It hurts. Put me in the coffin. Coffin. Yeah, it's you. It's you. you. You keep saying coffin. Put me in the coffin. Yes. Thank you. Rest. Go, Daniel. Go. Oh, God. You didn't make it very far, did ya? I listened to the tapes. The start. The start. Claudia. The start. Lester. And where was Armand in all of this? Ain't nobody cares. I don't talk that Ronald was trash. It's not exactly how you've talked about him to me. Did I catch you in a fantasy where the boy somehow fumbles his way to publication? While Lester strolls past a bookstore, your book displayed in the shop window where he buys himself a copy, reads your nasty embellishments and comes chasing after you again. Wait, is that why he wanted to do this? Because he misses Lestat? Which means we never saw Lestat in Paris. Where is he then? A final act of service I'd like to perform before I, I leave you to yourself. What? I know where he is. I'm sorry, what? I found his voice among the many. Is that what he was doing while he was in the trance? Lestat. No. Oh, what? What, what, what? I told him you were thinking of him again. Stuck. No. know where it is. <laughs> What's happening? Why is he saying no, though? I'm here. He's waiting for you. Oh, my God, where? He has injured himself. Louis. No. This is your chance, Louis. I am your maker's voice. Louis. Oh, my God, what the fuck is going on? Oh, shit. Mon cher. Oh my god. Why are you ill? What's happened to you? Why are you ill? What's happened to you, man? I love you, Louis. Uh, Tell him I love him, Armand. Oh my god. I still ship them, even after all this time. Tell him. Uh, Louis? Dude, why is he not saying that part? He was my mate. It's not the more. You left me for death. Yeah, right. Have I atoned for my part of Paris? What did he do in Paris? Or am I a reminder of the worst of it? Oh, God, I have so many theories running through my head right now. And now here I am and you can rest. I don't want to rest. I am the quiet you've been longing for. After all the garishness of life, the jostling, the clawing. I like my life. The dull thrum of desperation in you. Will I get the fixes I need to be somebody? But Daniel, you already know who you'll be. An ugly duplex back in Modesto. Oh, I thought he called him ugly for a sec. Your wife counting down your thrusts. Your children shying away from you. All the confidence and hope of your youth replaced by a seething boiling regret right on the border with one of you shh, shh, shh. it's okay is it okay man rest like honey on your tongue it is the comfort we all long for the end rest rest come come i'm you you rest now oh my god what is this Wait, this is like Santiago, right? After what you've put me through here, I deserve this. I know. But I need this one to live. Oh God, Daniel got so lucky. Are you asking, Maître? No. 
our room. He's fucking telling. I'm not asking. How is Louis the master in this relationship? Listen as though I'm the voice of God or an angel talking to you, telling you this room doesn't matter, this night doesn't matter. You're not inconsequential or a junkie. You're a bright young reporter with a point of view. I hypnotized him. If things ever get bad again, these are the words you'll hear in your mind like a tape playing over and over, like a song stuck in your brain. These words will hold you up and carry you. Oh my God. They are your lifeline. That's so sweet of Louis. He saved him in more ways than one. I destroyed two marriages. I fucked up two daughters, but I stayed a journalist. I... I was never so lost, I couldn't hold on a job. I blacked out. You woke up in a drug den. Armand fogged my brain. Is it RJ taking pictures of the company he works for? I was disfigured. I was in pain. But you remember right up until when you bit me, and I remember right up until when you bit me, and then both our memories cut out. Same precise edit on two brains. Exactly, it was Armand, but why? Why did he make them forget? I mean, I get Daniel, but why Louis? <laughs> How was your lunch? He looks so, so cool, though. How's Paris? Oh, we paused Paris. Reminisced about San Francisco. And? It started with Daniel. He asked why you saved him in 1973. I could see you were partial to him. I preserve your happiness even when you don't or can't. I yeah, had a hunch. hunch. Daniel oh my Mark. god, the script! Because it's a lie! Oh god, oh god, are they gonna confront him about this? Oh my god, Jesus Christ, this show is fucking crazy. Okay, this episode was amazing. I loved it so much. Again, I cannot wait for the next one to see if they're gonna confront Armand about his lies about San Francisco. Like, why? I'm God, I have so many questions. <laughs> Holy shit, I love this show so much. Okay, so he, as in Armand, changed their memories or made their memories cut at a specific point. Point. but why i don't understand that part like i get it with daniel right like he shouldn't remember all of that but then they left him with the vampire memories right like they didn't erase all of his memories so like i why did arman do that to them like that's so so interesting especially doing that to louis like what's the reason god i really hope they're gonna confront him about it so that arman can maybe tell us the truth i don't even know if he can trust him if he does say something but yeah this is so intriguing also the scene with Lestat's voice in Armand's head. I died. Like, I actually died. Like, I'm so curious. Okay, so Armand found Lestat among all the voices. But, like, where is he? Like, what is he doing? And the way that scene played out, or at least Armand suggesting that the reason Louis is doing the interview or wanted to do the interview was because he wanted his story out there so Lestat could read it and could come and find him, which leads me to believe that we will not be seeing Lestat in Paris, which is so crazy because I thought we were going to do that. Since in the previous episode, Lestat disappeared from Louis' mind, I thought that would signify that the real Lestat was coming back and it would be you know crazy timing where louis is seemingly letting go of lestat and then that's the moment lestat actually shows up you know for maximum drama but i don't think that happened because if it did i, I don't know if this makes sense like what happened in the 70s so where is lestat clearly he's still alive in the 70s and he still loves louis which is so sweet like louis straight up tried to murder his ass and lestat is like armand please tell louis i love him which he didn't do by the way shady as fuck why didn't he say it mm, interesting so yeah that was a crazy scene also armand saying that have i atoned for what i've done in paris has me fucking stressed I'm scared. Like, I'm actually so scared that Claudia is dead and that Armand set the fire at the theater and it killed her. My theory is further confirmed by the fact that Louis said that Claudia is calling me. I can hear her in my head. And what did he do? 
He walked out into the sun. Bitch, was she calling to you from the other side? Is that what you're trying to tell me? That she's dead? She died in that fire and now Louis tried to follow her? I just, I'm scared, okay? Because what the fuck is Claudia? Like, clearly Louis loved her so much and I don't think he would ever just let her go. Like, again, we got to hear the story as well where Claudia first left and Louis was on the bench sitting there because he chose the start, but I think he immediately kind of regretted it and he actually considered just staying in the sun in that moment. So it feels like he can't really live without Claudia. So I don't think he would just let her go unless that is specifically what she told him. Like, I guess that could be a thing where Claudia tells Louis that please do not follow me, do not come after me, I don't want to be with you anymore. I guess I could see it in that regard, but if she never said that, then I just don't see them not keeping in touch or being near each other. So I'm terrified that Claudia is dead and that she died in Paris and she wasn't supposed to probably, but Armand accidentally killed her as well while he was setting fire to the theater because Santiago is up to something shady since now I think he knows that Louis and Claudia have killed Lestat. I'm simply terrified to watch the next episode. I mean, how many more do we have this season? Three more, right? Because there are eight total. Yeah, I really wonder when the fire will happen and all of that and like, how are we going to see Lestat again if he isn't actually showing up in Paris? Where the hell is he? He was somewhere in the 70s. Why didn't he say where he was? He only asked about where Louis is. Why couldn't he just be like, hey, Louis, come find me. I'm at this and this location. So yeah, I don't know. I'm stressed and curious about the start. And I wonder when and how we'll see him again. If we'll see him again, I guess at this point, I don't even freaking know anymore, but I need to see him again. Like, I'm so... Sorry, I just love Louis and Lestat together, okay? And Lestat telling Louis he still loves him. It's so cute. I just need to see them together again because their chemistry is great and I love them. And yeah, it's also so interesting how Louis told Armand that he finds him boring and like Armand was actually going to leave as well, but he never did. And he just made Louis forget that he ever said those words to Armand. So. It's interesting that they're still together, even after all this time. Very weird, very intriguing. Cannot wait to see where this whole thing goes. But oh man, learning about Daniel's story was so much fun. I think he's maybe my favorite character in this show. I know, that's so weird, but I just really, really love him and I find him so fascinating and it was really cool to see him as a young guy. Also, I feel like the actor who played young Daniel did such a fantastic job. It definitely felt like a younger version of him. Like even some of the guy's mannerisms felt like totally in character for Daniel. So I really, really loved his performance and that whole scene was so intense. And like the fact that he was with them for days is so crazy. I love that he was finally, you know, able to remember and get this kind of closure from this. So I'm excited to see what he's gonna do with this going forward. And like the fact that Louis hypnotized him and made sure that he stayed on a clean path and stayed a journalist is so interesting and so cool and I wonder how this revelation will affect Daniel. I also just love the acting in general by the way like all of these actors are so fantastic like how is this cast so talented like not a single dot person in this like they're all brilliant in these roles like I don't know their real names unfortunately like the guy who plays Louis he's fantastic like he's probably the best actor in this show which says a lot because they're all amazing but I just love his portrayal of Louis and there's so much heart and emotion put into this role it's so good like genuinely the acting is so good like this show is truly brilliant and I'm gonna be so sad if it doesn't have a season three because I, I think this show needs so many seasons because such a talented cast, such a fascinating story. So I really hope this isn't gonna be the end for this show. I mean, the scene where Louis goes out into the sun, like, first of all, what a sad revelation. Like, I can't believe he was ready to do that. That's so crazy, so sad. And then him remembering it, like his acting in that scene is just heartbreaking. Like, oh my God, what an intense scene. I really, 
really loved it like that was so well done but also wait the scene where Armand is trying to kill Daniel and Louis is like don't do that and Armand's like you're asking me not to kill him and Louis is like I'm not asking and then he calls him master like what is that actually what is that because it definitely feels like Armand is the manipulative one and the one who's in control but there are these little glimpses where you're like Louis is more than meets the eye because he can command Armand and he calls Louis master. I'm so intrigued by those little moments, like little glimpses of like, hmm, maybe not everything is as it seems, right? Like Louis is definitely an unreliable narrator. I'm just excited to find out which are the non-real parts of his story. It's also interesting how Armand was trying to kill, you know, Daniel very much though the same way Santiago kills people on stage, but it seems like that's how Armand always kills. Again, that was like a very interesting little tidbit of what Louis said at the beginning of the episode where Armand doesn't kill very often and he kind of kills people who like sign up for it in a sense and maybe once he actually catches them he does the same little thing where like they're not in pain like they kind of embrace death or not even death but in Armand's case he was saying rest and he did actually end up talking Daniel into wanting to rest which is quite crazy very intense scene thank god we knew that daniel was going to be okay otherwise i would have been stressed out of my mind i definitely would have thought that they were gonna kill daniel like holy shit what a crazy crazy part of the story also apparently i was very wrong on thinking that it was armand who attacked daniel first okay but like when that scene was happening couldn't you hear hey stop yelling it wasn't that louis who said wasn't that louis voice like am i hearing things i need you guys to let me know like how did i mishear that or like what was that because it was definitely like louis attacking daniel gurgling sounds none of them really talking but then you just hear on the recording hey stop who the fuck said that because armand was not in the room at that point just yet so like whose voice was that like what was that that threw me off so hard i really thought i figured something out i was like i'm so smart look at me go and then no it really was just louis attacking daniel like that was true i was really expecting a huge twist coming but not so much like not in that regard anyway so yeah my bad my crazy theory did not pan out at all but yeah this episode was fantastic i really loved it so much like it was just so cool that we got to see what happened in the seven days i really wasn't sure if we we're gonna get like an actual episode dedicated to it but once the intro started and we saw san francisco i got so hopeful because this was so fun loved it cannot wait for the next episode especially for the Dubai scenes things are gonna be intense especially if they actually confront Armand about this whole thing yeah yeah excited for that very nervous for the Paris stuff though terrified that Claudio is going to die and Armand's gonna have something to do with it so not looking forward to that at all I might just end up skipping the Paris stuff because I'm terrified and I don't want to see her die at all so yeah both excited and extremely stressed for the next episode and yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed this reaction thank you so much for watching and as always a huge huge shout out goes out to all my patreons for supporting me thank you guys so much you guys are the best i really appreciate every single one of you and if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like leave a comment down below and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in the next one bye